to share with you all some of my experience in using this bag uh, during mosselation. So my talk will be basically on how to use the bag, what are the problems when you use the bag, and how to overcome those problems. So I, I will not touch on the problems of power mosselation. <clears throat> now, uh, the first question we ask ourselves is, um, how do we remove specimens? <clears throat> Basically, they, we can remove specimens through the vagina. We can remove it through a caldotomy. We can do mini laparotomy or single pot incisions. Or we can do power mosellation. This is the usual methods in which we remove specimens, especially large specimens. Now, if you look at uh, through the vagina, which we all do, the advantage is that there is a large opening in the vagina. This is usually done after hysterectomy. There is, there, you can remove large amount of tissues. And uh, unfortunately, the disadvantage is, is that it can be difficult, especially in patients who are Virgo intacta and also nulliparous women. It, uh, you may need to cut the specimen abdominally first before removing vaginally. It can be very tiring. And you may have, sometimes you may have cuts in the vagina when performing this mosellation. So these are the problems we face when we remove specimen through the vagina. But a lot of us do this, and it's it is easy, cheap, and comfortable. The second is caldotomy. When, when, you, when, we, when we are doing caldotomy, the advantage is that there is no large incision on the abdomen. Uh, it heals very well. And you can actually remove large specimens uh, through the vagina, through, through this caldotomy vaginally. The disadvantage is that you can't do it on a Virgo intacta patient. It may be difficult in nulliparous women. Caldotomy may extend and can cause bleeding. This has happened if you accidentally, if it's a huge, if it's a large specimen, it can tear laterally and it can, uh, it can uh, cause bleeding. There is uh, always the worry that you may accidentally cut the rectum, and they may not. It cannot be done in patients who have an obliterated pouch of Douglas. Say, for example, severe endometriosis. There is a rectum stuck there. You cannot do a caldotomy. So these are the disadvantages. Now what about mini laparotomy? Mini laparotomy, you can either do by single pot. This is a single pot uh, laparoscopic myomectomy, not a big fibroid, small fibroid. You can easily uh, cut and do manual mosellation and then remove the fibroid. So this, this can be done. I think a lot of people do this. And in the United States, since power mosellation has been banned, many people do this kind of techniques. Or you can do by mini laparotomy. <clears throat> mini laparotomy, you just make an incision, say, 3 centimeters or even more, bit 4 centimeters and then remove the specimen through this mini laparotomy. Now this one, uh, I'm doing a mini laparotomy for a lady with a large uh, fibroma of the ovary, which was very difficult to mosellate, so I decided to do a mini laparotomy. Uh, it is a, it's a half a kilo, five, almost 400 plus kilogram uh, fibroma, and this is done. So what are the advantages? Disadvantages is that you have a large incision, and uh, it can be a struggle. You can struggle through a small uh, wound. The advantages are you can do direct mosellation using a knife. You can do incision, can be hidden either in the umbilicus or uh, suprapubic area. And you may be able to remove large chunks of tissues uh, through this mini laparotomy. So the last method, which is power mosellation, which we are now going to talk about. Now, what's the problem with power mosellation? Just one slide. This is a problem. In the United States, this lady who already has passed away had uh, leomyosarcoma and power mosellation was done and it was disseminated. So it became a big issue and uh, power mosellation has been banned, in, um, in, at least in the United States and I was told even in Canada. Um, but in most other parts of the world like us, it's not banned, but we also want to be careful. We want to be cautious. So how to not let these such things happen to our patients? So the now question to ask is when do we decide to do power mosellation? Uh, in, in, for me, I will do it with large specimen, large uteruses, large fibroids, lar uh, large adenomyosis. Uh, in Virgo intacta patient, they don't want anything to be done in the vagina. Uh, if the pouch of Douglas is obliterated, is closed, you cannot make a, a caldotomy. And some patients who refuse caldotomy, then you have no choice. You have only either do a mini laparotomy or you have to do power mosellation. So this will be the type of cases that I will use power mosellation. So if I'm going to do power mosellation, I'll be most comfortable to not prevent any spread. This is what we are worried about. If you look at the video on top, 
Power modulation is okay until you reach the small pieces when it starts rotating. When it starts rotating, then you can small pieces get dispersed, and this is what we are worried about. So if we could do it within a bank, then it it could prevent not not only worry about dissemination of leiomyosarcoma, but also dissemination of fibroids, causing uh, uh, small fibroids forming elsewhere. So the uh, I was uh, well, three years ago. I was looking for a bag, and the one that I could find at that time was this bag. This bag is called More Safe Bag, and it was made in India. So I directly communicated with them and said I wanted to get this bag, and I got the bag, and we started doing all our modulation within the bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some idea of how to use this bag and what are my experiences, so that if you are thinking of using this bag, what problems you can face and how to overcome it. This particular bag also comes with a mosolator itself, the disposable mosolator. Now this is the bag. The bag has got a large opening, uh, and it is uh, the, this opening is quite thick. It also has got this blue coat, which is very useful when you're trying to put specimen inside. The good thing is it is rounded. Some of the bags are square. This is rounded, so you don't have all the tissues uh, uh, going into places. And it's got this tail. I'll explain to you what this tail is for, uh, is for, for about. Basically, we are going to mosolate through this bag and look through this camera. That's, that's what we are going to do. Okay? So the advantage is you're doing within the bag, but the disadvantage is you only have got one instrument inside. You don't have a second or third instrument to hold the fibroid for you. So you just have just the instrument for mosolation. Now the first question is, how do you insert the bag into the abdominal cavity? The bag is quite big. If you go to Adachi counter, you can see the bag. It is quite a big bag. It comes in three different sizes, but it's still quite big and can be quite troublesome to put it into the abdominal cavity. So first thing you have to decide when you're doing the surgery, which is going to be your camera port and which is going to be your mosolation port. OK, all of us have to do it differently. And the incision for the place where you're going to place the bag, it should be at least 12 millimeters. If it is anything smaller, you have trouble putting it in. Now, this is how I operate. Most of my cases that I'm operating are very big uteruses with big fibroids. So my camera is right up here at Huang Li point. If you can do it, if it's small fibroids, you can, of course, do it from the umbilicus. And I do this diamond shape, uh, two 5 millimeter pots and three 5 millimeter pots. So now I have to decide where I'm going to do the mosolation from. You can either mosolate from here, or you can mosolate from here or here, either one, any one of these three mos mosolation. I have done from here, but now I've moved to doing here. I like to do it here because I want a bit of a distance from this back to this, the back and the camera for me to mosolate. But many people are comfortable to mosolate from here. So you can choose either to mosolate from here or mosolate from here. Do what you are comfortable with, with what you have been doing. And, and, and then carry on with using the bag. So the next is, how do you insert the bag into the abdominal cavity? You can either do it with an introducer. The bag comes with an introducer. This is an introducer. It's a plastic uh, tube-like thing. And this is the bag. You can use without the introducer. You can introduce through a trocar. That means you put this into this bag and put it into the trocar, or you can directly through the skin. So there are very many ways of uh, doing it. I have experimented with all four. I'll tell you what my preferred choice is, but you can decide which way you want to put it in. So this is one way of putting it in. This is something that I was doing three years ago when I first started. This is how the company recommends it. You have this blue area, which is the mouth, and you put this mouth into this uh, introducer, which is a plastic, clear plastic, uh, 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 a plastic tube. Once you have put it in, uh, that is the whole bag, and once it's, it's inserted, then you introduce this into the abdomen. So you see this now fitted in nicely. Okay, once that is done, then okay, that is that is the plastic, this is the whole bag, and then you can just push it through the skin. Okay, just push it through the skin directly inside. Here I'm not using a troca directly, and from the abdomen you pull it out. So from the abdomen you pull it out. You take out the you take out the sleeve. The sleeve is taken out, and then you just push pull it in. Okay, the one of the things I don't like about this technique is that when you are pulling, gas get filled up inside here. 
And towards the end, you may have some trouble pulling the bag in because this bag will gets, gets gas filled up. Okay, that's a, that's a trouble with this technique. This is what the company recommends. Okay, and then you just push it in. So it's a little bit troublesome because gas get trapped inside. Okay? The second method of putting it in is through the troca. What you do is you roll the bag, put it into the introducer, and then you push it through the troca. This is a, this is a 10, this is a 12 millimeter troca. You can push it in, but you will find that it's a bit of a struggle. The, the struggle is because the bag and the introducer are same color. And because they are same color, you cannot, you cannot distinguish. Sometimes it's very difficult to pull. That's a sleeve. See, I have a trouble to push it, pull it, pull it down. So what happened is I got tired of it. I took it out, took out the troca, and then I came directly. Then I pushed it directly, and then I could bring it in. So after experimenting, I think probably direct is better than going through the troca. OK, then you can push the whole bag in. Don't think this is uh, easy. Yesterday we had a workshop, and it is quite a struggle to push it in, pull it, push, push the bag in, because the bag is quite big. And it's, it's made of very good material. It's tough. It doesn't tear easily, so then you can push the whole bag down. OK, so this is the second method. The third method, which is what I do now, is I roll the bag. A, that is the introducer. I roll the bag from behind. OK? So not from in front, but from behind, so that gas doesn't get trapped. And the advantage of doing this is also when it goes in, the bag, the mouth of the bag is open. I enlarge the incision, the 5 millimeter incision, to a 10 millimeter incision. So once that incision is, I'm happy with the incision, then I hold it with a grasper, and I just push it directly into the abdominal cavity. It's very fast. And just push, pull it down. Once you pull it down, the, the, the mouth of the bag is already open for you. So it's easy to put the thing into the bag. Instead of you rolling the other way, you have to unroll first and then see the mouth. OK? Then you can put back and start the start. It. So this is the first step to put the bag into the uh, abdomen. So once you have put the bag into the abdomen, the next step is to put the specimen into the bag. This may be easily said than done, especially when you're dealing with big specimen. If it's small, three, four centimeters, it's very easy. But if it's a big specimen, as you can see, I I, I, once you have finished, you have to unroll the bag. I forgot that. You've got to unroll the bag. And when you're unrolling the bag, remember the tail, which is here. The tail is here. The tail must be usually for me, it must be on the right side, so that that tail has to come out afterwards. So make sure the tail is in the, on the right side and easily accessible. Then you have to take the fibroid and put it into the bag. And this fibroid is a 13 centimeter fibroid. The bag, we just saw it, the length is about 20, but it's still quite difficult to put it in. Can you see? I'm kind of struggling. One tip is your patient may be in the Trendelenburg position. Bring her flat so that the fibroid doesn't keep falling back. So here I have, I have I managed to put it around, put the bag around, around the fibroid. And once I put it in, you can see that the, because I, didn't, I forgot to put the patient back, the fibroid keeps falling down. So if you have the head up, uh, then the fibroid will not fall down. So once you have got both the sides, okay. another important thing is this bag, if you go to Adachi counter, you can see the bag has got a mark. And there's an arrow, that the arrow is there, the arrow. It's important that this arrow is facing the camera, OK? Uh, you need to look at it before you understand that, OK? Why it's be like that. So once it's a bag, the fibroid is in the bag, then you can hold it together. You must hold it together, OK? And then you pull it out of the skin, all right? You pull it out of the skin. Here, I'm using a suprapubic cord. So I'm pulling out to the suprapubic port. If you're using the side port, then you pull out from the side port. You have to pull out the whole mouth. All right, the mouth must come out, and the fibroid is within the bag. Okay, so this is the second step. The third step is to pull the tail out of your camera port. This is the tail. You hold the tail, and and pull the tail out of the camera port. So here I'm using the Huang Li point for the camera port. Uh, uh, and, uh, and you come out of the camera port, <coughs> and you bring it out, and it is out now here, and out here, and you can, you're, you're in line. All right, now you've got, you're ready to do the next step. Okay, so there's a third step. 
The fourth step is actually to put the troca into the, uh, the, the sleeve. And this may be not as easy as it thinks, because if, you're, if, you're, if your sleeve is twisted, then you cannot put the troca in, you may break the back. So you must make sure that the sleeve is not twisted. Now, how do you know the sleeve is not twisted? Now, that is the problem. Now, what I, I do is, I do in a different way. I put in this 10 millimeter troca. Remember, the, the fibroid is within this bag. Huh? I put in the 10 millimeter troca. I put a gas into this bag through this spot. So when you fill up the gas, what will happen is the gas will come out, and then you can put in the scope, telescope into this spot. Your gas will fill up, and you can have gas coming out of the other sleeve. And by direct vision, you can look up and you can see by direct vision that it is not twisted. You can put in the other troca, the 10 millimeter troca. I hope you understand this. So in this way, you will not accidentally uh, make a puncture of the bag. Okay. So once you have done this, then the surgery becomes easy. Then it's, everything is easy. Then you can, what you do is you take your camera, a cord, you put in the camera, attach your gas, and you're ready to mosulate. Okay. So once it's done, you put in the mosulator. Here I'm using a Versato mosulator. You put in the mosulator into the bag. And then you can you remove the insert, place the cap. That's a reducer. Because you'll be using probably a 10 or 12 millimeter tenaculum to do this surgery. And then you can start mosulating. You're in. And then you can pick up the fibroid. and then you can start mosulating. Okay, then, then the mosulation becomes easy. I think this one, all of you all know how to mosulate. Okay, we don't have to teach you all how to mosulate. It's just that now, this fibroid is within the bag, and then we can mosulate within the bag. So there is no worry about any, any uh, tissues uh, losing out. So you can see that through this, I am now taking out the specimen. Okay, this is outside view. And then you can start removing the specimen. <clears throat> okay, then you can keep mosulating. This is a fairly big fibroid. I think it's about one kilogram, this fibroid. <clears throat> and then you can start taking out little. These little pieces, you don't have to take out. Okay, these little pieces you can leave behind because they will come out through the, the uh, pot when you take it out. The next step is how you remove the bag. <clears throat> Removing the bag is like this. You just tie it, tie the bag, tie so that is the, the knot is below the hole, and then you pull the bag out. And you can all the small tissue comes out from the bag. Okay? So that is how the whole procedure is done. <clears throat>